when, when um, you first began this uh, challenge to the notion of meaning, I think a lot of people just couldn't imagine that you really meant it. We could really get along without this idea of fixed meanings in the head, which gave words their meaning. And then you came up in Word and Object with your famous thought experiment about radical translation, which was, I think, supposed to drive that point home. Exactly. And, and let me just uh, say what that thought experiment is, because there's been a lot of puzzlement and a lot of controversy about how to read it. Um, we imagine a tribe of people living off somewhere where they're completely isolated from, from the rest of the world so that there's no knowledge of their language, so there's no bilinguals anywhere. There's no chain of interpreters. And we imagine sending a couple of linguists into the field to learn the language of these people. And they each go about the job independently. And of course, they, they, they have to work it out from first principles. They have to, they have to, it would be like trying to learn a language on another planet. You would have to work out what words for yes and no were. And it would be an elaborate analytical procedure. And the amazing conclusion you came up with was that in principle, these two linguists could go and they could both do a wonderful job. They could come back with a, a, a dictionary and a grammar so that you could converse with these people, you could learn their language. And yet, if you looked closely at the two, at the two dictionaries, at the two versions of this language translated into, into our language, say, they'd be different. That is to say, they would, not just in trivial details, they would be in substantial ways, they would be different ways of rendering their language in our language. And then the amazing claim you made was, and there wouldn't be any fact of the matter about which one was right. Now, a lot of people, now they knew you were serious about your challenge to meaning, because this was, uh, to them, I think, a sort of outrageous suggestion that there wouldn't be any fact of the matter. Uh, and many critics have tried to offer uh, refutations of your of your radical translation thought experiment, um, and one of the things they've done is they've challenged you to give an example, even an imaginary example of what it would be like for this actually to happen. What would what would happen? What would be the case? C can you respond to the to the challenge that you give us an example of a real radical translation failure, uh, uh, the indeterminacy of radical translation? Uh, I've never been able to, uh, to uh, uh, arrive at a satisfactory uh, example of that. Uh, radical translation is a, uh, is, is a hard job. But uh, uh, the uh, position is, is, is plausible, rather, uh, to me, uh, on the basis of uh, consideration of what one has to go on. Uh, and uh, uh, what does constitute uh, a, uh, a test uh, of a faithful manual of translation. Um, the test, the only test I can see in, in, is, is uh, in, in principle, uh, smoothness of dialogue, uh, success in negotiations when you're using that language. Uh, and uh, so here you'd have uh, two manuals which are uh, completely uh, faithful and successful by, uh, by any such test. And furthermore, we could even say they, uh, by chance, are, are equally, uh, equally simple uh, in, in their uh, translations. Um, and now, how about the test of their uh, uh, distinctness, their dissimilarity? Because uh, from any point of view, there are many acceptable ways of translating a sentence from one language to another. Uh, uh, simply because of the fact that uh, uh, we have interchangeable sentences in our own language, and neither of these would do as a translation of the lang uh, a sentence in, in question from the, uh, from the alien language. So it isn't that, uh, but rather uh, tra uh, translations that are incompatible in some sense. Uh, and uh, uh, a, a test uh, uh, that uh, presents itself uh, uh, is this. You have some text, some long monologue uh, uh, of, in the native language, uh, and you have these two manuals, uh, and uh, uh, each manual gives a translation which is smooth and uh, successful by the, uh, uh, the, the nego negotiation and uh, 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 fluency uh, tests. Um, and, then, uh, uh, and then you try using the manuals in alternation. Uh, First sentence from this uh, monologue, you translate by the one manual, the next sentence by the other, and you alternate these. And whereas each 
uh, pure translation by a single manual uh, turned out to be uh, a splendid and smooth. Uh, the, uh, the, this uh, uh, zigzag uh, translation uh, turns out to be uh, incoherent. There's a, there's a way of formulating the criterion that doesn't depend on an uh, intuitive notion of equivalence of English translations, uh, which is something I also challenge, of course, when I'm challenging uh, the same as of meaning. The uh, radical translation thought experiment uh, was a way of uh, pressing the skepticism about meaning. I wonder if I can just give you two ways of expressing that skepticism and just ask you which would be the more faithful to your intentions. Would it be better to say the notion of meaning's perfectly all right in its own place, it just can't play any role in serious science? Or would it be better to say notions of meaning, translation, synonymy, definition are really fundamentally flawed? No, I, I, I think that's, that's a good point, and I go with your first there. Uh, and, uh, uh, well, uh, lexicographers use the word meaning, uh, not only the uh, meaning in the uh, uh, sense of a, uh, of a mass term, but the uh, meaning of this expression, meaning of that. Uh, they, they'll divide a, uh, uh, a definition uh, down into sense one, sense two, sense three. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, reason for doing that is different contexts in which it's used in a somewhat different way, and uh, uh, the, uh, that's all right. We can, we can explain their use of it, and we can explain all their, uh, their use with, uh, without uh, appealing to, to uh, uh, anything in the way of, a, uh, uh, of an idea in the mind that, uh, 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 that is uh, fixed in its attachment to a particular string of, of, uh, of, of phonemes. If, um, we, if we take the, uh, the interpretation as saying that a meaning can't play a serious role in science, yes. Is that completely general? For example, would it rule out the possibility of meaning playing a, um, a role, a serious role, in a science of linguistics or a science of psychology, for example? I think it does. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, I would, I would uh, uh, be, be skeptical about the use of the notion of meaning uh, in, uh, in, in theoretical linguistics uh, as distinct from practical lexicography. Uh, theoretical linguistics, or uh, uh, as in as in psychology, or or in psychology, uh, as in uh, philosophy. I'm struck by the the way that if we took this skepticism fully seriously, it would seem to undercut um, what many people would think of as the philosopher's stock in trade. If you ask a philosopher a question, there are many philosophers whose very first response will be, "Depends what you mean," or first define your terms." But those notions, meaning and definition, are sub judice. Um, according to the skepticism about meaning. So if it's taken so seriously, would it really undermine that standard philosophical response? Uh, no, well, no, I, th I think that could be paraphrased, uh, paraphrased uh, satisfactorily. And a lot of these idiomatic uses of the word can be. And uh, uh, certainly, uh, uh, I, I uh, use the word meaning often enough in a uh, non-technical way myself, uh, and I couldn't quite imagine uh, somehow inhibiting that. Right. We can just review this uh, little section of discussion. Many people are going to want, I imagine, to reject skepticism about meaning, but since um, you've given these arguments, of course, they have to reject one or other of the starting points, one or other of the premises or assumptions. Are you able to isolate for us perhaps the two or three really key assumptions that are playing a pivotal role in these arguments that somebody would have to deny in order to deny your conclusion? Uh, yes, the, uh, uh, per perhaps the, the, the principal one uh, is uh, just assumption, well, I'd say the observation, but one that tends to be neglected, uh, is uh, that uh, we learn language only through hearing it and uh, uh, in observable situations. It's, uh, it's a matter of observable behavior. It's the way language is handed down. It's also the way it's used. Uh, 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 language is said to be used in communicating meaning, communicating ideas. Uh, how do we know that the, a, a given uh, sentence uh, conveys the same meaning uh, uh, to me that uh, 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 the speaker had in mind? Uh, the only way we know is by uh, uh, considering the context and uh, 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 Considering whether the uh, uh, whether his use of the word fits in with the way we might have used the word, uh, the it's the uh, uh, observable manifestation. It's the sentence, not the thought, not the meaning. 
uh, that we have to go on early and late. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the, uh, I think the moral of it is, uh, uh, all right, that's all we have to go on. Why don't we stop with that and, uh, and recognize that that's what we're talking about. We're talking about these sentences uh, and, uh, uh, and their use uh, and, uh, and in what circumstances. And it's, uh, uh, it's what, the, uh, what the lexicographer also is doing. In, in fact, if you, if you uh, think about how a dictionary actually runs, uh, it's very seldom that, well, I think it's less than, less than uh, uh, equally often anyway, uh, that uh, uh, you find a, an out-and-out -out literal uh, definition, uh, an ostensible equivalent uh, phrase to the word that's being explained. Uh, uh, look up elephant, look at, well, uh, 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 lo loxodont indicus or whatever. Uh, yes, that's not much help. Uh, but then you uh, uh, get uh, descriptions. Uh, and the, the, the dictionary, the purpose of a dictionary, as I see it early and late, is to give you enough information about uh, a word uh, so that uh, uh, you'll be uh, helped sufficiently in your reading or uh, in your use of it. Uh, and uh, that, that there's no boundary between the dictionary and encyclopedia except in terms of that purpose. That the dictionary doesn't, uh, the, dic the art lexicographer doesn't deliberately go beyond that purpose in the uh, uh, factual information that he's conveying. So, just to sum up about the possible rejection of the meaning skepticism, the best way um, from what you've just said would be to reject the idea that all that the child uh, learning or acquiring language has to go on is the uh, behavior of the surrounding conspecifics. Uh, yes, and then what is the alternative? Uh, there's telepathy. Uh, there's uh, 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 somehow uh, uh, innate command of the language, but that's refuted when we uh, uh, start observing, uh, observing the infant and finding that, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, twins have separated at birth uh, and put into uh, uh, different uh, 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 languages, different households uh, linguistically, uh, come up fluently in the two languages and not uh, in their respective languages and uh, completely uh, helpless in the other language. Uh, so that won't carry us very far. Uh -huh. uh, linguistic readiness, that's good. You push re linguistic readiness speculatively, and this is Chomsky uh, as I get, get it. Uh, push it as far as you can, short of treading on differences between specific languages. Uh, then the in infant refutes uh, the hypothesis if it uh, if it uh, ventures beyond that, uh, that that limit, but up to that limit, uh, yes, I think those hypotheses uh, those hypotheses are welcome, certainly to me. Uh, but they just raise the question, of curiosity, further further research. Let's find what is the mechanism of this psychological, neurological mechanism of this uh, 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 extreme linguistic readiness, and just what does it consist in? Uh, this much we can be sure: there is some linguistic readiness innate beyond what the uh, higher apes and other uh, uh, animals have, or the birds with their bird calls, although they do have signals, uh, there must be to account for our just incomparably greater facility in learning, learning, uh, uh, in, in, incomparably more complex uh, 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 systems. Uh, and so that, this is all at the, at the perfectly legitimate empirical level of speculation.